In studio with me now to discuss the evolution of mobile money in South Africa is Trent McLelland from FlickPay and visiting our Cape Town studio is Quibus Elias. He's from SnapScan. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us both today uh, on this exciting discussion. Maybe let's start off with you in Cape Town, Quibus. If you can paint a picture with regard to the mobile payment landscape in South Africa and on the rest of the continent, how do we fare? I think it's extremely exciting uh, what's happening in mobile payments in general. Uh, we're seeing an enormous amount of growth in the market, some really, really exciting opportunities. And I think in many ways Africa is really leading the way uh, in terms of this kind of innovation. So uh, it's a very exciting space for us to be in and I think specifically in terms of, of opening up new avenues for, for transactions, uh, that's something we enjoy being a part of. Well, I'm sure Trent you might agree as well given the fact that uh, you yourself as well are an innovator in the mobile money space. Yeah, we um, joined the party a little bit after Quibus's crowd, um, but it's, it, it's been an area that everyone seems to be focused on. We've had um, a lot of um, interest in the space, so I think there's um, a lot of room to grow in this market. We're seeing people adopting it and um, enjoying it and using it. We're seeing the benefits uh, that merchants are enjoying, so yeah, I think um, it's the space to be in and I think our timing is right. Let's touch on that because you mentioned the merchants, merchants as well as the customer experience, but if I'm the CEO of a financial institution, should I be viewing this as a threat or an opportunity to uh, uh, venture into the world of mobile payments? It's interesting, and I'm sure Kubis has got a different view on that because um, of their deal with Standard Bank. Mm. Um, I think they have seen us as a threat just because um, their technology uh, is perhaps moving towards dated in terms of the speed point type machines they take a little bit longer to uh, process a transaction and um, giving your card your credit card to uh, say a cashier or whatever there's risks in that because that's where the skimming happens and I think that's where there's a little bit of anxiety on a consumer's point of view because you you know that's the the fraud risk from a credit card point of view our system you don't need to hand a credit card over so um, you don't need that speed point, you don't need that um, machinery that, um, that they're sort of using. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we can get your voice then on the uh, uh, element regarding the competition with some of the financial institutions. That's not uh, a, a particular in your case, but uh, is, it, is it becoming more difficult to navigate the mobile money environment when there's financial institutions, there's the telecoms companies as well as innovators like yourselves? I think absolutely that, that definitely is the case and I think we're actually in agreement there. I think the traditional sort of banking model of, of payments is the only possible way is probably not going to continue into the future. And I think that's why you see all of the large financial institutions as well as many independent players are, are putting products out into the market. I think the really exciting piece for us is they're not only competing with credit card machines. I mean, credit card machines are great in terms of the functionality they have. I think the, the really exciting piece for us is extending that, that access, creating payment opportunities where previously it was simply impossible or, or uneconomical to do so. Uh, and I think that's the exciting piece for us. But what does this mean from a regulatory perspective where I think that's uh, where there are several loopholes we're finding not only in South mm. Africa but elsewhere else as well? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, payments is hardly an unregulated space. Um, and I think with good reason as well. So it is a case of, and, and that's also one of the reasons why, why Standard Bank launching uh, SnapScan is quite important, is in finding a way to really look at these cutting edge innovations, but in a way that cooperates with the regulator, that updates that framework, and that ensures that at the end of the day, the customer is protected. The customer, the merchant's money is safe, but we, we don't uh, hamper or retard that kind of innovation. That, uh, coming back to regulations for a moment or two, uh, the, the protective measures that innovators like yourself need to put in place to ensure that this doesn't fall vulnerable to fraudsters or money laundering, uh, which has come th often come through as a key concern when it comes to mobile money. Yeah, it's a really regulated industry and um, it's changing all the time. And I think with um, applications like FlickPay and the other applications on the market, um, the regulators are watching what's going on. Uh, I mean, you, you look at internet transactions and what they're doing there, and uh, you know they're looking at what we're doing as well. So very much so, very regulated, and we want to work with them to move the industry along and to benefit merchants and consumers. So, so far there hasn't been a bad scandal that has tainted the industry at all? Not where we're concerned, so 
No. You can't put on that front. Maybe let's get your ideas as well, Trent, on a pan-African cross-pollination kind of mobile money innovation that uh, not only can you pay for purchases in South Africa that's linked to the banking system here, but across the continent and maybe anywhere else that you travel in the world. Will we ever get to that kind of environment? Sure. I think if we look at um, the history of it and where, how we've got to where we are now, um, there were a few wallet-based mobile systems out there, but you had to sort of preload your wallet before mm. uh, you went shopping or went to use it. And I think that goes against human nature. We kind of want instant gratification. So uh, they were slightly non-starters because of that nature of having to preload. What, what Flickr and the other systems do is the credit card becomes your wallet. So suddenly, uh, so long as you've not hit your limit on your credit card, you can see something and use the, the application to buy it instantly. And um, that desire for instant gratification is, is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been a big shift in it. I also think um, if you look at the African example and the sort of mobile, a lot of people ask me mobile money in Africa versus South Africa and why the success in a place like Kenya where in there's 20, yeah, yeah. in Pesos, 25 percent of the Kenyan GDP and um, why that's so successful. And I think uh, there's, there's a tipping point that one has to reach with this sort of thing. So if you, in, in Kenya, where so much transacting happens through Mpesa, you, the, you don't need to pre-fill that wallet anymore. It sort of fills itself because mm. everyone's transacting that way. So I think that's been a big shift um, and a benefit to them. And we're going to see it here. I mean, the, the mobile networks have uh, launched their own products here too, Vodacom and MTN. And... Um, I think th there, you mentioned regulatory, the regulatory environment in South Africa has really impacted them considerably compared to a place like Kenya. Um, but, you know, they, they're big companies and they've got huge consumer bases, so we need to watch what they're doing. Exactly. Um, Innovation continues nonetheless. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we have run out.